Joel King, what up? What up? We back in the courthouse. We back in the courthouse. We just waiting on the judge. They getting ready to get started. They getting ready to get started. Choke, no joke. You already know we back in the back in the courtroom. We back in the courtroom. Young Thug, Young Thug, Bigger BX, what up? Nephew, what up? Wifey, what up? Bigger, I'm gonna give you a call in a minute. All right. Choke, no joke. You know what it is. We back in the courtroom, baby. I think it has something to do with uh, whoever was in it with the uh, Zoom.
Healthcare is the last thing you want to worry about. Joe Biden gets it. He's working to lower health care costs. Donald Trump wants to repeal the Affordable Care Act, raising costs and leaving millions without health care. It's that simple. Hey, guys, it's great to see you all here. Let me send over the materials and uh, let's do it here. <laughs> There's no Wi-Fi here. Well, isn't that great? Guys, I'm so sorry. It's not going to work. It's only my smartphone. You should be now. Oh, hey, guys, I'm, I'm using a different device. I can't even share. That's a pretty good excuse. Oh, I know you guys like the back of my hand. If you have this one, you'll be fine. Did you all receive it? Fed up being stuck without a laptop to share? Click here. All right, good morning, Council's Industry Parties. We're going to go on the record in the matter of the state of Georgia versus Khalif Adams et al. In 22 SC 183572, um, Mr. Stilwell and Mr. Botts and Mr. Shark, good morning. Mr. Williams, Mr. Steele, Mr. Adams, and Ms. Renard, good morning. All right, Mr. Kendrick and Mr. Weinstein, good morning. All right, Mr. Huey and Mr. Matthews Jr., good morning. All right, Mr. Nichols, Mr. Harvey, and Ms. Westmoreland, good morning. All right, Mr. Ryan and Ms. D. Williams, good morning. All right. All right, Mrs. Brown Smith. All right, Ms. Hilton, Mr. Atkins, and Ms. Love. Good morning. Okay. And who is your legal assistant? Since we since we interjected introducing their, themselves now, is it Miss Rand? Is it Miss Randall? No, Miss Knight. Knight. Okay. Good morning, madam. 
All right. Um, all our jurors present, sir? Yes, sir. All right. All right. You ready for your next, with your next witness? All right. Summon our jurors then, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I don't think so. Good. All right. All jurors present. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, jury, good morning. Good morning. All right. State, call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. The state call investigator Kirkman. All right. Summon investigator Kirkman, please. All right, Investigator Kirkman, good morning, Matt, sir. Can you morning, please Matt. approach the witness stand once you get there? Before you sit down, if you return and face our anger, you'll be sworn as a witness. Yes, Your Honor. Swear for the testimony of the individual who is going to do so. I see. Thank you. State Court, first class, next witness. Detective Anthony Kirkman, A-N-T-H-O-N-Y, K-I-R-K-M-A-N. And Investigator Kirkman, where are you employed? I am employed with the City of Atlanta Police Department, currently with the Larson Unit, as a detective. And how long have you been with the City of Atlanta Police Department? Going in my 24th year. And how long have you been with the Larson Unit? A um, little over two years now. Prior to your time with the Larson Unit, where have you been assigned within the Atlanta Police Department? I was sworn in 2001. I was first assigned at Zone 2, the Buckhead area. At 2007, I was promoted to detective investigator, synonymous in the same. Back then we were called detectives, now they call us investigators. 
Um, 2007, when I got promoted, I went to the narcotics unit. Worked the narcotics unit from 2007 until 2012. And 2012, I was assigned to Zone 6 as a detective. Was there from 12 to, I think, around 16. Um, 16, I went to a task force with the, with the GBI. It was a Metro drug task force. Um, was there for about a year. 17, I went to Zone 1 as a detective. I uh, was in zone one from 17 to 21 when we, 21 or 22 when they centralized again. And since 22, I've been with the, the larceny unit. And you said when they centralized again, what do you mean? Um, prior to centralizing, um, Atlanta has six zones and an airport. All zones and the airport had their own detective group within that zone. Um, at different times, the detective group was responsible for uh, various amounts of crimes and what they handled, what they investigated. Um, generally, ours went all the way up from the smallest of petty theft all the way up to shootings would be handled by the individual zone detectives. Uh, when they centralized, they went back to detectives are no longer assigned to the zones they went back to under a central umbrella where they are more specifically responsible for certain types of crimes. Um, like I am in larceny dealing with thefts. Um, there's, you know, you have your burglaries, your auto thefts, your, your homicide, your SVU, all that kind of stuff. So instead of being divvied out to zones, they all went back under headquarters, central location. And when did the zones become more centralized? In 2021 or 22, um, just a couple of years ago. And are you post-certified? I am. And were you post-certified in May of 2013? I was. Now, if you could tell the jury a little, um, you tell the jury a little bit about your training, if you had any within, um, with any type of firearms or firearms. Sure. Like I said, I've been on, going on my 24th year. Um, I've had thousands of hours of total training and probably breaking down hundreds of those hours in firearms specifically. Um, every year we have to do from between eight and 16 hours, just annual training with our firearms. Um, also when I was in narcotics and with the GBI, I did a lot of specialized training with firearms, including tactical shotgun training, submachine gun training, um, Scenario-based training, we go to specific training locations, like the federal marshals have a, a building complex that's set up like a house or apartments or they, it's removable walls so they can do all kinds of adjusting where you would, could go in and use simulations and actually train either entries or just training with, with the firearm. And during the course of your kind of firearm training, do you learn how to identify defects that could be considered a bullet hole? Yes. Um, do you also learn about energy and power as it relates to how um, bullets um, come from the gun into a surface or into an area? Yes. Okay. Now, taking you back to May 2013, um, I believe when you talked about your history with APD, were you assigned to Zone 6 Police Department within um, 2013? May of 2013, yes, I was assigned to Zone 6. And just briefly tell the jury what area borders, um, what area encompasses Zone 6 back in 2013? Back in 2013, Zone 6 is unique within the city because it actually involves parts of Fulton and DeKalb. Um, zone six is mostly the east side of Atlanta, um, east of Piedmont Park, down over towards um, Moreland would split the DeKalb from the Fulton parts of zone six. Um, from the zoo over to around Bouldercrest back in 2013 was basically zone six. 
uh, from North Avenue down to the, the city limits on the south side. And what zones border zone six back in 2013? Zone two would have bordered zone six, zone five, and zone three. And where would zone three have bordered um, zone six back in 2013? They would have shared they would have they would have bumped into each other. Zone three's eastern boundary would have been zone six's western boundary. And approximately, we're talking about streets or areas where where in the city would they border occur. Well, zone six is the like I said, the far east. Um, zone three would be just a little bit over from the far east, more kind of just down from downtown. Um, Good landmarks, zone three would have been the zoo. Um, would have been the old Turner Field, zone three. So that area, university, that kind of, if you're familiar with the city, that that is more zone three. And would the zone six border be in and around that same area of where the zoo is on Boulevard down that side of the city? A little bit farther over. Um, you know, the, the zoo's on Confederate over the, um, not far, like I said, it, it would have been close. But. Tell the jury back in, back in 2013, were you an investigator? Yes. And what were your job duties and responsibilities as an investigator with Zone 6? Back in 2013, the Zone 6 investigation would have handled everything, all crimes that had been committed other than um, your murders, your rapes, that sort of thing. So I, I would have been responsible for investigating crimes from petty theft all the way up to armed robberies and people getting shot. I want to specifically direct your attention to May 13, 2013. Did you have the occasion to respond to the Zone 3 precinct? Um, on May 13, 2013. I did. And why did you respond to that location? There was a report of a citizen who walked into Zone 6 Precinct, um, later identified to me as Ms. Archulette Benning, Bennett. I'm sorry. She had walked into the Zone 3 Precinct and spoke to the desk officer there and reported that she was a victim of a armed robbery and that her house was shot. Okay. When you, at the time in which you learned of this um, person walking to, walking to the Zone 3 precinct, where would you have been at that time? I don't remember exactly where I was, but I was assigned in Zone 6. So I was a Zone 6 detective. So I was advised on the radio of the situation of the walk-in in zone three. Okay, where in 2013 was zone six precinct? Zone, um, it was at 2025 Hosea L. Williams and the same place it's currently located. And in 2013, where was the zone three precinct? Um, 880 Cherokee um, at the zoo, right next to the zoo. And about how far approximately was the zone six precinct from the zone three precinct? Four miles. Now, did you eventually make it over to the zone three precinct? I did. Now, why is it that you were called as a zone six investigator response to the zone three precinct? It I was called because the incident occurred in zone six at 980 Confederate, even though the victim was in zone three, the crime still occurred under my responsibility, which is zone six. Um, given it was reported uh, as a prior crime, those types of incidents, the um, whoever, whatever zone detective in that area of responsibility would actually respond and handle the initial call. Okay, so you said a few things there. You said, although she was in zone three, what do you mean? She walked in the zone, C precinct, zone three precinct. Now- To make the, make the cry out for, for the crime, yes. 
You said that the incident happened in 980 Confederate Court. It did. Is it first that location in Fulton County? It is. And how far approximately is 980 Confederate Court to the Zone 3 precinct at 880 Cherokee? It's about a mile, a little under a mile, probably. And have you had the opportunity to look at a map um, with those two locations on it in preparation for your testimony here today? I have. Okay. Your Honor, permission to approach? You shown that to the defense counsel's order? Yes, they were given to the top of the we showed it to the state. Yes, you may have permission to approach. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to show you what's been marked as state exhibit 26 double A. Tell me, or Alpha Alpha, tell me if you recognize 26 Alpha Alpha. This is a printout of either Google Maps or Street Maps with the outline between um, Trestle Tree Apartments, which is 980 Confederate to 880 Cherokee Avenue, which was the Zone 3 precinct back in 2013. And um, and looking at this, is that a fair accurate depiction of the distance between 980 Confederate Court, also known as Trestle Tree Village Apartments, and um, 880 Cherokee Avenue, which was a zone for the precinct in 2013? It is. You're right. This time the state would like to tend to face exhibit 26 um, Alpha Alpha. Is that right? Any objection to states 26 Alpha Alpha? No, no objection. All right. It's admitted, maybe published as you see fit. And I believe the stick is right here. If you could take that um, right here. You mean to take the stick? Yes. Sir. Okay. And if you could show the jury um, where on this map where it's in 880 Cherokee Avenue Southeast. Right, here's the zoo. That is the old zone three precinct right here at 880 Cherokee Avenue. And where is the Trust and Truth uh, Apartments over 980 Confederate Court? This United back in 2013 was called Confederate Court. And this is 980, was 980 Confederate Court, which is Trestle Tree Apartments. And um, <laughs> if you can tell from this map, we talked earlier. <laughs> <laughs> All this would be zone three, even back then. Um, I mean, I'm sorry. This is zone, back then that was zone six. All this being what, uh, detective? And where, which streets are you I'm sorry. To on back in May, 2013, um, around the zoo would have been around the border. Um, this eastern side being zone six. And is that the eastern side of United Avenue on this map? It's the eastern side of Boulevard, what I'm pointing out. Okay. So Boulevard have been a general, from my recollection, it's been it's been a few years. Boulevard would have been about the a hard boundary between six and three. Okay. So everything to the left of Boulevard would be zone three, everything to the right of Boulevard would have been um, zone six. Correct. Okay. Um, and approximately, what is the distance between the Trestle Tree Village and 880 Cherokee Avenue? Um, it's being point nine on this map, on this picture, which is about, all oh, right, I said about a mile. Okay. And back in 2013, what was close, which precinct was closer to Trestle Tree Village? Um, the Zone 3 precinct at 880 Cherokee or the Zone 6 precinct at Hosea L. Williams? Zone three would have been much closer okay. to Trestle Tree. Let's say about less than a mile. You're probably looking at, you know, four miles going to, to zone six. And when you arrived 
to the zone three precinct, um, did you meet with Ms. Bennett? I did. Was she with anyone when you met with her? Have a seat. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, you can. For a little while. <laughs> well, I need my watch to get up, so I'll let you know if I need it. Um, yes, I did meet with Ms. Bennett at zone three precinct. And was she with anyone? She was with a young male child of hers. And when you say young male, how old are you referring? I can't remember how exactly the young man was. It was between, my best memory is between infant and just barely walking or not walking stage. So a baby? Baby or toddler. And what, if anything, happened while you were at the Zone 3 precinct? Um, I spoke with Ms. Bennett who advised me of the events that occurred both um, earlier that morning around four o'clock a.m. and the previous day, which was Mother's Day, May 12th, 2024, I mean, 2013. And what did she tell you while at the precinct? She said that around um, one o'clock on Mother's Day, which was May 12th, 2013, she was inside of her apartment at 880 Confederate Apartment D when she heard a loud knock on the door. Um, she went to, to see who was knocking at the door and her statement to me was that it was a person named Thug and Thug's brother. Did she tell you that at the police precinct or did she tell you that later? I don't, I don't remember exactly when that was told to me, if it was before we went to, to, um, to her back to her apartment or, or prior. Did you memorialize your interactions with Ms. Um, Bennett in your police report? I did. Well, looking at a copy of the police report help refresh your memory as to what she told you at the police precinct. Yes. One second. You may now. I'm going to show you what um, I'm showing with defense counsel and state's exhibit 58 um, alpha alpha. Tell me if you recognize 58 alpha alpha. So, according to my report wait, here, wait. I'm sorry. Yes, I do. The 58 alpha alpha is an incident report I made on May 13th, 2013. And look at a copy of your police report. Will that help refresh your memory as to what was said to you while just at the precinct? It would. Okay, I'm going to ask you to look at um, 58AA, don't say anything, read it, and once your memory's refreshed, just look up and let me know. Okay. Is your, has your memory been refreshed? It has. All right. What occurred, what if anything did, did she tell you while at the precinct? At the precinct, she told me uh, that the night before at approximately or the day before, at approximately one o'clock, she was robbed at gunpoint and at her apartment at 80 Cherokee. And she waited when she was the next then. Go on second. Okay. And let me ask you why you're a freshman. You said the apartment at 80 Cherokee. Is that where the apartment is? Eight, that 980. I mean, 980 Confederate Avenue. I'm sorry. Basis. I'll stand the objection. Are you looking at a copy of your report of refresher? I am. As to what though? That's what the that's what the improper objection is. So if you need to get in, yes. Are you looking at the police board refresher memory as to what she told you while at the police? Yes. Okay. And and the the time frame. So did looking at the report help refresh your memory as to what she told you at the precinct? It did. All right. Um, go ahead. Has your okay. memory been refreshed? It has. All right. So when I when I initially met her at the precinct, Stone Sea Precinct, she advised me that the day before on Mother's Day at about one o'clock, she was robbed at gunpoint by um, known individuals to her. Um, she stated that they later came. They later came back. Okay.
if um, 911 wasn't actually physically called? Via police radio to dispatch. So either the desk officer or whatever officer respond, either if it's a flag down or a walk into the precinct, would get on the police radio, advise their location and what they had. And that would initiate a CAD report. When she says CAD report, she's saying computer automated dispatch. What that does, that just gives you when people, when you're in an accident or you have an incident and people give you a police report number or an incident number, it's generally nowadays computer automated. Um, in Atlanta, it's the year, like this year of 24 would always be the start. And then a Julian date, so 001, it would start January 1st is 001. Then the last four would be whatever number you were that day on either calling 911, flagging an officer down, or walking to a precinct, whichever would needed to generate a report. And have you, over the course of your 24 years, been able to view and understand care reports? Yes. And are you familiar with how they are kept? Yes. Are care reports kept in a regular and ordinary course of business for the Atlanta Police Department? Are they? I'm sorry. Kept in a regular and ordinary course of business for the Atlanta Police Department. They are. And are they generated at the time in which the calls are initiated? They are. Um, permission to approach. I'm going to show you what's the mark that states it in the 55A and 56A. Right. How many of you recognize it to be the 55A and 56? Oh, excuse me, 55 Alpha Alpha and 56 Alpha Alpha. All right, we'll start with 55 Alpha Alpha. Yes. If that's okay. Um, this is what you refer to as the CAD report, computer aided dispatch. It's from May 13th, 2013. Um, and, and before you go into full detail, tell me, do you recognize that to be a uh, computer aided dispatch report? It is. All right. And does that appear to be looking at that CAD report? a fair and accurate depiction of the care report generated um, on May 13th, 2013. It is. All right. Now also looking at 56 Alpha Alpha. Yes. Does it also appear to be a care report that was generated back on May 13th, 2013 as released to business? It is. And again, are both 56 and 57 Alpha Alpha kept 55 and 56 Alpha Alpha kept in the regular order course of business of the Atlanta Police Department. They are? Yeah, this time I'm saying like tenders 56 Alpha Alpha, 55 Alpha Alpha, and 56 Alpha Alpha into evidence. And Jason states 55 Alpha Alpha, 56 Alpha Alpha. Yes, Your Honor. Objection as to both on the grounds of hearsay. Uh, the Council of Over the State also object uh, as to improper foundation. Uh, it was not a proper witness. That's why I go up to the foundation. That's the story of record. Um, uh, it comes over where the state was on number three. I believe this is specifically what it is. You're right. May I respond? And the conversation closed up. May I respond? Yes. Your Honor, he's been an officer with um, the Atlanta Police Department for 24 years. He is familiar with the reports in which he is discussing. These reports are kept in the regular and ordinary course of business in which he's familiar with. 
and that'll be enough to get it in as a business record exception under um and he this is my cat report <laughs> and it's his cat report and so he would be able to introduce that is um one of those reports are mr is investigator kirkman's actual cat report that he generated as a call in regarding this incident your honor All right, Mr. Adams, that's your objection, Mr. Foundation. Uh, Mr. Therian, <clears throat> confrontation, they're over, they are overruled. So, at this point in time, I'll agree with the state's uh, over your objection. And that's the improper hearsay, Your Honor? 55 out loud and 56 out loud. And that's the hearsay, Your Honor? Overruled, sir. Permission to publish. Thank you, Your Honor. First, 55 out loud. Let me know if I'm walking. Now, first one that states within the 55 alpha alpha, if you can just kind of orient the jury, um, how would this CAD report excuse me, strike that? Let's go back. Earlier, you talked about how the number was generated. If you can look at that incident number and walk again through how that the significance of those numbers, the year, the um, date. So I testified to that. I want them to show this. Okay. Um, going through this um, exhibit, if you can let the jury know how is it that, again, because a call wasn't created, how this was generated? This, this was, if you go down just a little bit, you can take, you can see that it's self initiated, which means, and then now go back up or right here. You can see that's the officer's name and their unique ID number and self self initiated. That would mean it's either a walk into the precinct, he got flagged down or something, he ran into something. So this would be something where they pulled an officer pulled himself out on. Okay. And you just scroll down. This officer who pulled himself out on it was working 3399. Um, $33.99, three would be the watch, so that is Evie Watch. Three would be the zone, zone three, and 99s are usually the officers working as desk officers inside the precinct. And we'll also count that that person was working at the desk inside the precinct. Yes. Based on looking at the CAD report. Yes. Okay. And at what point in time? 
initiated this case? Um, Your Honor, I'm going to object that whole speculation. What time was the cat initiated? According to this, um, SI self initiated. 5-13-2013 at 2-44-58 p.m. And do you know why? Do you know what would be the significance of the remarks on 9 8 time? Um, 9 8 Confederate. Um, I don't know if he didn't. I don't know why it wasn't always spelled out here. But that would be speculation and I would say. Okay, looking at the second line, 3399A, what does the A symbolize? A is arrived. And then you just keep on going down. Okay. So RL. RL is relocating. That's where the address was corrected. And then RL relocating looks like the address was corrected again from court to avenue. And then what, what is C? C is when the officer cleared the call. And looking down the bottom, we're at 246.01. And it's at 5232. Uh -huh. Explain that to the jury. Um, I can go back or I can read all of, all of it. Um, we're talking here, yes, sir. Um, let's just give in the address Confederate Court inside the city of Atlanta. Okay, and now and I believe that's everything that's contained on that page. Okay, now looking um, at um, this page, what if, what if anything is that indicating on um, this portion of the camera? All right, so this is still 30, the, the desk officer's cab report. It's showing when he gave the address, it shows up as 607, which would be in back in that back then zone 6 beat 07 or beat 7. Um, same thing here. Um, this is switching the CAD from a zone 3 CAD to a zone 6 ad CAD. Because even though he pulled out, it was self initiated in zone three. It's not 80 Confederate, it's actually in zone six. So that that corrected the location in the CAD report. Um, so he's the primary officer again with the with the address. And going now, anything else within that page? Um, that's a it's the premise history page. Um, it's not showing anything. Um, so, and then I don't know if there's anything in the narrative below. But look at that case, there's nothing in the narrative. No, I don't okay. see any, anything in the narrative. All right, now we're going to look at 56 out the alpha. And but time to time, can I refer back to this just for I get a whole whole view? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Now, at fifty six out of is that a different incident number? It is. And do you know why there was a different incident number from the first one for 50, 55 out of out to 56 out of out? Because this is the one, this is the CAD report that I self initiated. Okay. And with the fact that you self initiated generated a, a, a new number? It was. All right. Uh, walk us through what time did you uh, initiate this uh, report? Um, 15.09, which is 3.09 p.m. Okay. And is that when you would have received information from Zone 3 to make your way to Zone 3? This was self-initiated while I was at Zone 3. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I know you had a response. 
It was self-initiated while I was at zone three. All right. And if we can move there. If you can kind of walk us through on this portion of your CAD report. Okay. Again, SI, that's self-initiated. Um, date and time. And what was the time? Um, um, May 13th, 2013. Um, 3.09, 37 p.m. Okay. Um, again, shows the address. County Confederate Court Apartment D. Um, if you go here, that RL, that's um, relocating, meaning I got on the radio and I advised them that I was changing from zone three precinct and actually going to the location of 980 Confederate Avenue. And this is when I cleared the call. And what time did you clear the call? At 4.28 p.m. And so it was fair to say that you spent about an hour on this call, an hour and 18 minutes on this call. Yes. And looking at the bottom under the narrative, mm -hmm. what did you tell radio? This is, this is radio. Sorry, check. This is um, radio traffic, 513, 2013 at 3.09, 37 p.m. Um, this is me pulling out that I have a female and a juvenile male. This was my vehicle mileage that I started with. Um, this is the time that I started traveling, 1509 hours. Advising them I'm going from zone three precinct. 16G is police jargon for precinct. Um, that 7334, that is the ID number. So they were advised to meet me at Confederate Avenue. Um, this at 709, I'm sorry, this. So at 15, 14 hours. So five minutes later, I arrived. My any mileage was um, 807.5805, which is one mile from zone three precinct two. We can produce 20 miles of glass in 24 hours. These tiny pellets will eventually turn into Cordura fabrics. That's a lot of fertilizer. See how Coke companies are shaping tomorrow today. The proxy technician's number. Um, so that's their unit number, and they were advised of the call. Now, back in 2013, did you have um, body worn cameras in 2013? No, I did not. Now, we spoke about um, Ms. Bennett, who you met. Do you recall what her date of birth was? Um, not off the top of my hand. I'd have to refer my police report for that. And would looking at a copy of your police report have refreshing memories of her date of birth? It would. I do. And um, how do you recognize 57 Alpha Alpha? This is a copy of the police report written by myself on May 13, 2013. And we're looking at a copy that helped refresh your memory as to the date of birth. And it that. sure did. Okay. Um, and without reading from the document, um, once your memory's refreshed, you can just look up and let me know what was her date of birth. 6-15-1986. Um, And did you, from that care report, 
Um, what occurred once you made it back to <clears throat> apartment D and not a confederate uh, court? Per the CAD report? No, no. I'm what sorry. happened once you got back to the apartment, got to the apartment? Um, we... Um, it was myself, Investigator Jones, Miss Bennett, and her small male child. So we all rode together. Um, we went to her apartment, which was apartment D. Um, we visually looked inside and outside of the apartment, um, verified stories and events Miss Bennett was saying, and also questioned Miss Bennett about the incident that happened. And let me ask you, why did you go back to the apartment? Because this was a report of um, two serious crimes. Um, one from the day before on the 12th of an armed robbery with firearms taken and shot. And the second was a report of them coming back in that morning um, firing shots again. Um, so due to the nature of potential evidence, witnesses, um, wanting to verify stories and accounts. Um, I went back to where the location was alleged to have happened. And while at the apartment, was she able to give you more detail about what happened? She was. And what, if anything, do you recall her telling you as far as what happened first on May 12th? 2013. So, Miss um, Bennett said she was inside of her apartment. She heard a loud knock at the door. Um, she looked and noticed it was a male named that she knew a uh, name Thug, and also a person that she stated name was Thug's brother. Um, she said that these two were friends of her child's father. Uh, Mr. Makia Anderson. Uh, uh, once she recognized that she knew the individual, she let them inside of her apartment. Did she say what if anything happened once yeah. they came inside of her apartment? She said she went, she went into the kitchen to give her baby a bottle, or make her baby a bottle, excuse me, at which point um, Thug's brother um, produced what she called a nine millimeter handgun and put it back to her head, to the back of her head, demanding her um, personal items, money, effects, stuff like that. Did she advise anyone else when they she said um, another male had entered um, named DK. She said that it was a, um, a non-military, but she had to describe to you what color that non-military was. Um, I have to go back and, or, I don't believe so, but I have to go back and check on the report. Okay, we're looking at a copy of the report, how professional it It would. Okay. Um, silver, not millimeter. And you said that there was a third person, DK. Did she, did she advise that she was aware of or knew who DK was? Did she know DK? Yes. And did she say if they asked or demanded anything from her? Yes, they demanded several items. And did they take anything? They did. What did they take? I have to. Um, well, go ahead. Yes, I know they took um, a Versace necklace. And, and if you need a refresher yeah. report, just. Yeah, I got. I, if there's, I have to go. Um, I know that they took one of her cell phones, four thousand dollars cash, some car keys, a Versace necklace, a baby or book bag. Um, I think another hundred dollars off the table or something. Um, I have to go back and get, get more of the list. Is that okay? Yeah. Sorry. Um, they took her Caltech PLR 16 223 caliber pistol. And this, do you recall her? She told you who and she took the gun. Um, 
decay. Do you recall she told you there was anything inside of the baby book bag? Oh, I'm gonna have to go back. There's something. You say besides or beside? Was there anything inside of the baby book bag oh. that was taken? Yeah, um, yeah, inside she she said Ray Ray headphones. Ray or red? Red, oh. red, sorry, R E D. And did she describe the color of the baby book bag? Yes. She can refer to the question. Brown. And you said that she um mentioned that they took car keys. Do you recall what type of car keys they were? Were they hers or the rental or something else? She said, I believe she said rental, but I have to make sure I have to go go back. Yes, you can. Oh, where are the car keys? Rental car keys, yes. If, if you need a refresh your memory, is there anything else um, that she listed as being taken? What you said thus far is the Versace necklace, a hundred dollars, an additional four thousand dollars, one of her cell phones, rental car keys, her brown baby book bag that had the red Dre headphones inside of it, and her Caltech model um, PLR um, two two three pistol. Was there anything else? So we got the four grand in there. Yes. Yeah, I believe that's all. And was there a dis distinction or a difference between where the hundred dollars was and where the four thousand dollars was? I know the hundred dollars was off the kitchen table. Um, the four thousand dollars, I'll have to go back and refresh if I specifically said that where that was. Um, I don't specifically say it, but I did separate it. I didn't do forty, so. Guess in the looks like maybe they were both on the table, but two separate, yeah. And after she told you what um, I was taking, did she say if anything else occurred? She did. What? What did she, she say occurred? She stated that on the way out, um, DK fired one shot from her stolen Caltech um, just above her couch into the living room wall. Did she advise that they left? Yes. Um, and did she advise how they left? And two vehicles. And did she tell you what, what the two vehicles that they left in? I know one was a blue Dodge Challenger, and I had to I had to look on the color of the other, a brown four-door vehicle. And to your knowledge, do you know if either of those were associated with the rental car keys that she um, said was stolen? I don't know. She made no mention that they were that her car was stolen, just the car keys. And did she advise at all to you um, what occurred once what she did once they left her car? She did. What did she say? She said that um, she was scared, so she stayed inside of her apartment for several hours <clears throat> um, before going to a hotel room for the night. And then, um, did she tell you when, did, did she return to her apartment? After leaving to go to the hotel? Not to my knowledge, not until I drove her back to the apartment. Did she advise you of anything else um, that occurred at her apartment? She advised, um, she stated that the reason she came in to the zone three precinct to report this was that earlier in the morning, around four o'clock, she received notification from some unknown witnesses, neighbors, that around four o'clock people had returned and shot up her apartment. 
And is that the reason why she came and reported? She said after conferring with her mom and the fact that they came back and shot her apartment up, that's why she was reporting it the next day. And then was she able to show you anything on her own regarding um, the individual that she had, that she told you came to her home the day before and shot and, and stole from her and, she, and yes. shot that one shot on Mother's Day? She told me she had a picture of Thug and DK on her cell phone. And was she able to show you that picture of Thug and DK on her cell phone? She did. Did she say anything else about the individuals, um, about any of the individuals who stole from her on Mother's Day? She said they were all friends of her child's father, um, Mr. Anderson, I believe, Mia Anderson, Mika Anderson. Um, she said that they were using the phone that she stole. That she stole? That they stole, I'm sorry. One of her, the cell phone, the Boost Mobile cell phone. Um, but they were using that to contact her, saying they were sorry. And... Did, did she ever tell you they advised whether or not they did she ever tell you they communicated with her? Yes. Okay. What, if anything, did the individuals who stole the items communicate to her? Um, can I refer exactly yes. what they said? Said they called her to apologize. And to do anything else? Um, offer to return her stolen items. Was she able to tell you if she knew where these individuals were the night before they robbed her? That's, they said they were out with her child's father, Mr. Anderson. And this is all information that Ms. Bennett provided you back at her home. Is this all the information that she provides to you while back at her home? Yes. Now, early on in the care report, you said you had ID tech come out. Why did you have the ID tech come out? Um, to take pictures of Ms. Bennett's apartment, which I noticed um, bullet holes. And have you had an opportunity to look at those pictures um, in preparation for your testimony today? I have. Um, and, Your Honor, this time the state would like to um, publish um, what has already been admitted as State's Exhibit 1 through 23 A. Um, a, a. Now, while this is um, being put up, let me ask you this. Are you familiar with the apartment layouts of the Trestle Tree Apartments? Um, familiar with the layout back in 2013. I don't know if they've been refurbished. Re yes. Yeah. And how are you familiar with the layout of the apartments back in 2013? Um, I was in Zone 6 for for several years, and I had a few calls at 980 Confederate where I went inside the apartments. And have you had the ability to go inside and see the layout of the apartments? I'm sorry? Have you had the ability to go inside those apartments and look, out, look inside those apartments? I did. Permission to approach your honor. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you what's been marked as six exhibit 24 um, Alpha Alpha. Tell me if you recognize six exhibit 24 Alpha Alpha. I do. And how do you recognize six exhibit 24 Alpha Alpha? Um, it is very similar to the layout that would be a, a two bedroom apartment at 980 Confederate back in 2013. And in looking at um, 24 Alpha Alpha, is that familiar to what Miss um, <coughs> Bennett's apartment looked like or resembled back in 2013? Except it's transverse, so this 
actually have been in the front door okay. and then at the back door. So right. the opposite of what's in stage four out now. Right. The um the that up here, let me get it up, I'll show you. Well, up here, yeah, yeah. That would have been the front door and then the back door. I'm I'm gonna check any So before you tell me about that, but mm -hmm. that fair act of picking up the land out of the apartment back in 2013. It is. Now this time I said our tenant is 24 out now. Please adjust your 24. I want to check that foundation in this case is not picture is adverse or opposite. I'm going to say some other stuff. I'm going to say some other stuff. I'm going to say some other stuff. Well, if I was looking at it, no, I'm sorry. Yep. If you were looking at that apartment complex, outside of it being flipped, is that the layout of the two bedroom apartments at Trestle Tree Apartment back in 2013? It is. And this time, say like 10 to 24 Alpha Alpha into evidence. Second, Jesse, according to rules, there's nothing different. Yeah. He can draw, old school, he can draw. For sure. <laughs> I can't. I'm left handed. I can't draw. <laughs> apartments with this we'll use this bottom portion to be um confederate court and draw it looking as the street is confederate court. okay so um, if you don't mind i'll do two pictures okay one just the building and then the bigger one of the actual apartment so the building would have been red bit brick building like that would have upstairs, downstairs, with four apartments each. Um, A, B, um, C, and D. So A and B, C and D. Um, this business apartment was D, upstairs to the right. So that would have been her apartment on that four apartment building. So here, Better Avenue, walkway up to that building. Um, her apartment would have been, like I said, upstairs. There have been some steps. Um, the door here, D. Um, some windows. Um, from the door, be the living room, wall, closets. Um, behind this wall, kitchen and bath and a couple bedrooms. Put that over here. Bedroom and bedroom. Okay. Right. Thank you. So, and based upon her recollection, that's a fair and accurate drawing. Of how you remember her floor laid out back in May of 2013. It is. And if you could just put May 5, 2013 on there and your initials. Now, I want to show you what's already been admitted. A, 44 Alpha Alpha, 45 Alpha Alpha, 
Do I already have copies of them? Go back to 44 and 45. Okay, so. Behind you. <coughs> what is the picture 44 alpha? That is the entrance off of what was then Confederate Avenue to Trestle Tree Apartments. And is, it, is that a gated entry? It was. Okay. Back in 2013, it was a gated entry. Oh. You said, I'm sorry, back in 2013? Yeah, back in 2013, it was a gated entry. Um, the gates didn't always work, but they they were there. And do you recall having, if you came up there, did you have to go into the gate to go to Ms. Um, Ben's apartment? He would, yes, I did. Okay. Um, all right, now we're going to start looking at state's exhibit um, number one, Alpha Alpha. And while we're waiting for um, that to load, do you recall if Ms. Um, Bennett was able to give you a phone number to the phone that was taken from her? Uh, I believe she did. I'd have to refer back for the number on my report here. Okay, if you go ahead and refresh. Look at your report to have a fresh memory. Yes, it's 404-734-7358. And then also, I believe you said it earlier, but it's I believe she did. I have to go back to the report for the serial number. Okay. Look and see if the, those copies of the report give you the serial number to the Kel tech. Yes, it did. And does look at the copy of the report have refresh your memory as to the serial number for the Kel tech? It does. And once your memory's refreshed, let me know. It is P as in Paul, V607. You say V as in Victor? V as in Victor. Six. Zero seven. Now looking at excuse me, six to be one out of out. Um did you direct the excuse me, the crowd team take the ticket? I did. Okay. And what was significant for you for the crowd team to take this uh, picture of uh, what's the picture of one out of out? This is the outside of 980 Confederate. Um, like I said here, A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, and D. And up here would be in Miss Bennett's apartment back in 2013, which is D. All right. Looking at two alpha. Is that just indicating the um, apartment number? Yeah, that is a fixed sign on the brick of the apartment. All right. Oh, what was significant for you as the investigator in depicting what's in three alpha alpha? Um, two things here. Um, this, this is um, 
is Bennett's apartment door D. And on that door right here is what I saw was a bullet hole in the door. And we're going to get to what you saw in D. Looking at um, door C, did you notice any um, defects within door C? I didn't back in the time. Do you see now looking at any looking yeah, there, There's some sort of defect here. Um, I'm not really sure what that is. And got a closer picture and the fact that I don't remember inspecting it back in 2013. I can't testify to what that is. And let me ask back in 2013, did anyone while you were out there speaking with Ms. Bennett come from apartment C and report anything to you? They did not. I'm not asking what anybody, so I'm asking what. Okay. Did anyone make contact with you from apartment C? They did not. Okay. Once looking at apartment D, excuse me, apartment D, you noticed that you said you noticed it was a what you believe to be a gunshot hole. How, why did you determine that or believe it to be a gunshot hole? Just a um, few things. Um, my training knowledge and experience of what a gunshot hole looks like when it hits a door or a wooden or metal object, in this case, a wooden door. Um, the size and the shape indicate to me that that is a bullet hole. Was there anything else um, regarding that hole that you that made you um, believe it to be a gunshot hole? I do on the back side. Okay. And when you uh, say on the back side, is that on the inside of the door? Yeah, on the inside of the door. Okay. Um, the way the wood was displaced. Uh, okay. Okay.
Okay. We've been going about an hour and a half or thereabouts, and you probably need to take a comfort break. We're going to take uh, 15 minutes and then come back, okay? All right. We're in recess. We in recess 15 minutes, y'all. We gonna wait around. We gonna wait around. Don't go nowhere. Yeah, I gotta check out that new episode of Suge Knight Collect Calls. Call Simon Says, episode 15. Woo! Shoo! That joint gave me chills. Make sure y'all check that out sometime today. Collect calls with Suge Knight. Episode 15, Simon Says. You talking about ether? Woo! You want to take take time, the fifteen minutes, because this is like a thirty minute episode. For the fifteen minutes, watch that and come back. I'll still be live. I'll still be here. But uh, when I tell y'all, it is fire. Woo!
Can we summon our witness, please? Chief. Hold on. Sir, Mr. Uh, De 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 Perman, can you step back for just a second, please? All right, you got 10 seconds. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, we were earlier, we had the fourth competition clause as well as hearsay, and it's A A M U S O K O versus State, Your Honor. It's 362 Georgia Appeal 276, and that is footnote three. And 2022. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Summon our witness, please. Thanks, sir. All right, summon our jurors, please, sir. Don't do that. Don't do that, please. All right, thank you, uh, Sergeant Ingram. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Now I want to look or focus or go to six alpha alpha and then seven alpha alpha. So first six, is that a closer picture of the defect that you identify as a bullet hole um, in six alpha alpha? It is. All right. And a seven alpha alpha, is that a close up? It is. All right. Now I want to look at eight alpha alpha. What? If anything was significant, or why did you have the crime team tech take the picture that was an eight alpha alpha? This defect with the with the wood peeled off, and that indication is directly on the other side of the door of where the previous picture's defect was, which I identified as a bullet hole. Okay. And not alpha alpha, is that a close up of um, that particular defect that you saw um, on the back of that door? It is. All right. <clears throat> now looking at 10 alpha alpha and 11 alpha alpha. What, if anything, um, 
excuse me, why did you have the crime team technician take pictures of 10 and 11 alpha alpha? Um, may I go back to here? Um, yes. All right, what we're looking at here is apartment D, Miss Bennett's apartment. Her front door, that's the window right to the right of her front door. This window, this is a picture of that window um, with an obvious defect in the window. And did you determine what type of defect or let me ask you. Based on your knowledge and training, was there any significance about that particular defect? Um, based on my knowledge and training, this defect appeared to be from a bullet and a bullet hole. Okay. And had you seen bullet holes that looked like that previously? Yes. Um, and is that over your 24 years of experience? Correct. All right. Now looking at 12 alpha alpha <clears throat> and 13 alpha alpha. Um, do you see that window or the other side of that window in 13 alpha alpha? Yes, right here is the inside of the window, and right there by the pull cord tag is the defect. Okay. Now looking at 15, and let me ask you this, do you recall back in 2013, it appears that a portion of that shade is open? Do you remember if that was how the crime team tech, you and the crime tech found it? Do you recall? Right. If it was any different than what it is right now with that defect, we would have taken a picture of it first before doing any manipulation. Okay. Due to the fact that there's no prior picture, this would be the way we found the window shade to be. Okay. All right. So now looking at 14 alpha alpha as a close up. And does it appear that most of the Windows are closed, <coughs> except for that portion that's kind of open um, in, in 14 alpha alpha. Yes, all the windows closed except for the portion where the defect is. And now looking at 15 alpha alpha. And 16 alpha alpha. Um, why did you have a um, crime scene take a picture of 15 and 16 alpha alpha? Because this is a shot of the defect after we manipulated by pulling up the slides. Okay. I mean the shades, the slides, the shades. All right. Now I want to look, kind of want to skip to 21 alpha alpha. Excuse me, first 20 alpha alpha. No, 20. Where on your diagram is 20 alpha alpha? This would be these closets right around here. Okay. And then 21 alpha alpha? Same closet, different angle right around here. Okay. And in relation to the window, where was that in relation to the window? They would be on a wall, like right around here to the window, maybe. And in 20 Alpha Alpha and 21 Alpha Alpha, what if anything was significant why you had the crime scene tech um, take pictures of 20 Alpha Alpha and 21 Alpha Alpha? Um, this is what, also, through my training knowledge and experience, this um, is what I, Considered a bullet hole, entered the wall, and skipped along the door. Okay. You said enter the wall. And how? What made you? Objection foundation. Stand objection. Okay. But based on your knowledge and experience, you said it hit the wall and did a trap. Yes. Objection. Same objection. Just... Stand objection. Now I want to go back to state's exhibit. <clears throat> 17 alpha alpha and 18 alpha alpha. First is 17 alpha alpha. What, um, if anything, were you depicting in 17 alpha alpha? And then, yeah. 
So this is um, the living room. Um, this is Miss Bennett's. Well, this was Miss Bennett's living room couch back in 2013. Um, this is a defect she showed me up here. What she said was fired the day of her robbery, which was 5-12 of 2013. Fired from her Caltech pistol from DK into her wall right there. And was she able to distinguish that hole that happened on May 12, 2013 from what um, happened at about 4 o'clock on May 13, 2013? Yeah, Miss Bennett's statement to me was that during the robbery, the day before on the 12th, only one round was fired inside her house. Her stolen pistol fired by TK, or excuse me, DK, behind her couch in her to her living room wall, which is depicted by that photograph and that defect. And was she able to say anything about what was depicted in State's Exhibits um, 15 Alpha <laughs> Alpha, um, 14 through 16 Alpha Alpha? Um, these were, um, I don't remember if she told me that these were specifically when they came back and fired, only that the one on the couch was the one, the only one fired when the robbery occurred. Do you recall sitting here now if she remembered having that hole in her um, window when she left her apartment to go to the hotel? Uh, I don't remember if she specifically told me that um, those are the ones that happened the morning before, um, only that she specifically pointed out the one above the couch. Okay. And... I'm looking at 23 Alpha Alpha. What was significant about 23 Alpha Alpha? Um, like we talked about earlier, and this, this is, um, Ms. Bennett told me she had a picture of PK and Thug on her phone. Um, she showed it to me. <coughs> This is her holding it, holding her phone. And this picture, if I remember correctly, she was holding it and our crime scene technician snapped a copy of the photo of the two people she said were involved in the robbery on 512. And sitting here today, do you remember which person was thug and which person was DK? I don't remember which one she told me was who. Um, Now, while you were at her apartment complex, let's first talk about inside the apartment. Did you find any projectiles? Have a seat. Yes, you have a seat. <coughs> All right. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Sure. When you were inside of her apartment, did you find any projectiles? I did not. Did you find any shell casings? I did not. Was that surprising for you? Um, no, not in particular. Why not? Um, one for, for inside, um, only one round was fired, she said, from inside the apartment. Um, that was from the day prior. Um, so, um, anything could have happened to the shell casing. It could have got kicked around. It could have got picked up. Um, I don't know, but it's not uncommon that, I. In my 24 years, I went to shooting scenes and not found projectiles or casings. And as far as outside, did you um, look for or find any shell cases um, or projectiles outside of the apartment? Um, I did look for shell cases and projectiles. Um, I did not find any. And again, um, based on your knowledge, was that uncommon or surprising for you? 
not surprising or uncommon. Why is it? Just one where we were, again, we were dealing with seven hours, several hours of time frame between the reported time and when I arrived to the crime scene. So, um, like I said, they could have been picked up, moved, blown away by landscapers who, you know, I've, any number of things could have happened. Were you able to canvas the area? I did. Okay. And without telling me anything that anyone said, were you able to speak with witnesses on the scene? I did. Were they able to give you information that assisted in your testimony? I sustain the objection. I'm not asking any here. I sustain the objection. Were you provided information that was assisted you in your investigation? Objection. I sustain the objection. Who did you speak with? I spoke with a. It's not what he who he spoke with. Not here. Said their name. Just saying something that's here. Your Honor, we don't gonna, believe anyone gave their name. I'm gonna sustain the objection, and you can't testify either. So I'm gonna sustain the objection. Let's move on. I've already ruled on this, anyways. After you canvassed the area, you spoke with witnesses. Did that conclude your investigation on that day? It did. Okay. Let me ask you this. When you were out there, um, the crime scene tech, would they, did they come in a crime scene van? They did. Okay. And would that crime scene van have been parked outside? It would have. Um, while you were out there, did any residents approach you to give any reports about any shootings? They did. Okay, excuse me. About the entire building being shot up, the entire complex. I stand the objection. Were there any 911 calls outside of the CAD report that you discussed earlier? Not to my knowledge. After May 13th, did you attempt to make contact with Ms. Bennett again? I did. When did you try and make contact with her? It's a couple of days after. Um, it was either May, I think it was May 16th, or can I, I look at? So let me know if that report tells if you need another report. No, I need a copy of my case notes. Permission to approach? You may. I'm sure it wasn't marked as Stacey Divin 59 Alpha Alpha. Does looking at Stacey Divin 59 Alpha Alpha help um, refresh your memory as to when you made, made contact with Ms. Bennett again? Yeah, I called on May 19th around 1020 AM and left her a message. And did she ever return your phone call? She did not. Um, did you try to make contact, make contact with her again? I did not. On May 12th or May 13th, did you get any other reports of any shootings at Charleston City Apartments? I did not. Now, were you ever able to identify uh, any of the individuals, Thug, DK, or Thug's brother? Um, I was. Um, were you able to identify? 
I was able to identify Thug as Jeffrey Williams. Now, after um, being able to identify Thug as Jeffrey Williams, <laughs> did you eventually close this case? I did. Why did you close the case? Because um, failure to contact Ms. Bennett to do a follow-up investigation. Okay. Now, in the report, in your report, did you make any determinations about Ms. Bennett um, as the reason why you closed the report? Um, I said in my report that um, it seems that she was being not completely truthful and that, that she cannot be located for a follow-up investigation. Now, do you did you put why you believed her to be not completely truthful? I did not. Okay. Today, do you recall as to why you may have put that she was not completely truthful? I do not. I know you said you didn't call her, but I said, did you ever go back out to the apartment complex to see if she was still residing at the apartment location? I did not. Any reason why you did not go back out to the apartment complex? Um, just caseload, um, busy. Um, did you ever try to make contact with the leasing agent to see if she still resided at the apartment complex? I did not. Um, were you ever able to determine, um, if she had gotten a new cell phone or a new cell phone number? I did not. And were you ever able to um, call the telephone number, um, in which she said that the suspects were calling from? I don't recall doing that, no. And I know you just talked about caseload. Was that the reason why you didn't do some of the other things? Um, at the at the time, I would have given Ms. Bennett my, my contact information, my number, my email address, along with her report number. Um, it would have been very easy for her to have contacted me also called and left her a message. Um, the follow-up investigation on this would be after the second victim contact where I would have brought her in. We did a formal interview recorded. Um, so this, when she did not contact me or return my calls, my call, excuse me, um, to quite honestly be candid, this was put on the back burner and I had to move on and, and investigate other crimes. And based upon what she told you about, at least what happened on May 12th, was that bullet hole in her couch consistent with what she had told you about what happened to her on May 12th? Yes, it was. Court's indulgence for a moment. this investigator Kirkman in your um, years of experience uh, what is it uncommon for victims of crimes to not respond after reporting a crime objection, I stand in objection um, did the fact that Miss um, Kirkman told you that they called and apologized to her 
Did that have any bearing on your investigation? That Ms. Bennett called and said they apologized? No, that the individuals who stole her phone called her and apologized. Did that have any bearing on your investigation? No. Thank you, I have no further questions. All right, ladies and gentlemen, given that it's 12.15 in the lunchtime hour, um, why don't we take an hour for lunch and have everybody come back for 1.15? Okay. Um, Investigator Kirkman, if we can get you to come back for 115, we'll continue examination at that time. Please don't discuss your testimony with anybody except the attorneys in this case. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. I'm going to release you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you back at 115. Okay. All right. I'll rise. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, jury's left us. We'll see you at 115.
right, y'all. I'll be back after the break. Holla back. <laughs> 